are doing problem 2.10. You're not even going to pull out the calculator for this one because you know how to do the list from looking at 2.9. We're going to go ahead and just show you basically first and foremost how to do, right, if you're just sketching this, you have point A, you have a force with a direction this way of 600. And these, of course, are newtons and a force with a direction this way of 800. And, of course, they're trying to get you to do a 3, 4, 5 triangle, but try to resist it and think about it this way. You know that this direction here is 40 degrees and this direction here is 60. So what you have is a force, a direction, an x component, and a y component. Your force here is 600. Your direction is minus 40, and your force here is 800, and your direction is what turns out to be 240, which means that your x component is 600 times the cosine of minus 40, and your y component is 600 times the sine of minus 40. 40. And in this case, it is 800 times the cosine of minus or of 240. And this guy, it is 800 times the sine of 240. You just take those, calculate them, and add them up. In your calculator, once you sketch this, you are much better off putting this in list one, this in list two and then using a program that puts to list 3 and list 4 these values. List 1 times the cosine of list 2 goes to list 3. List 1 times the sine of list 2 goes to list 4. You sum list 3, it gets you your x components. You sum list 4, it gets you your y components. You take the square root of this plus this. That gets your reaction or resultant. resultant. And if you take the arc tangent of y over x, you get the angle theta. So graphically, you have 600 going this way. You have 800 going this way. You go ahead and slide this vector over here. Again, it's concurrent, so you can slide it and you add the two together. And I think you see you have here a 3, 4, 5 in effect. If those, in fact, are 90 degrees, which it looks like they are, so that becomes something like 1,000. When you're doing these problems like this, try to resist the easy and go to the systematic. We'll pause it here and move on to the next one, which is 2.11. Problem. 2.11. Again, learn to draft the sketch to scale. Realize the book is not to scale, but think about that point and show the forces. This way, that force down is down. Its weight, it's 200 that has a direction of 270, correct? If you think about your coordinate system being like this, right hand coordinate system being 200 down, this direction here being 20 off of, of here, 20 degrees, because you have the 30 and then you have the 40, that makes 70, which leaves 20 to make the 90, and so this direction here is in fact 200 and this force here you're going to show it in the short term like that even though you know it goes the other way and that direction is in fact 270 minus 30 or 240 right and what you know is that when you're done with it the relationship between the sum of the forces in the y over the sum of the forces in the x should be the tangent of, in fact, 240. That's what you know. Now, this is probably best sold, sold, 
solve graphically, you start here, you're coming down at 200, you know it's going to end up along that line, and you have this line parallel here to do it. And so what you have is, this is one force, this is the other force, and then this is the force in the boom. All right, so there's all kinds of different ways to do these. Try to identify the fastest way to go about doing them and then try other ways. In all reality, this is most easily solved not by thinking about the resultant, but by thinking about the sum of the forces equals zero. And so if you do it that way, you have force one, direction one, x and y, and so you know force one is going to be equal to 200. The direction is 270. You can figure out your x's and the y's. You know force two, if we'll call that the given force, is going to be some unknown. I'm sorry, this is force one, this is force two. It's some unknown. We'll call that x if we would. It has a direction of 200. And you have then an equation for that. And then force three is the boom. It's going to be also an unknown. We'll call that unknown y. And it is going to be in a direction of 240. So what you have in this question is you have known, known. And what your unknowns are are these two things here. So you can solve a system of equations to solve that. Much, much, much easier much more correct in many ways to decide that this is going down there it's eventually going to go down there along that direction take this vector and this vector and you have your answer I will put out this in a format right but realize that is not the preferred way to do a problem like 2.11 it is definitely doing it by graphics usually it's a combination thereof Moving on to 2.12. Once again, if you have not done these problems, you might want to come to me and get another set, as I've posted them at least once before. And these are the basic cat-dog, just adding vectors tip to tail and what that means in many different ways. And so 2.11, you're given this, pens. 2.11, you're given some basic reaction force here, some F, reaction in the wall, it can only be vertical. And therefore you know that you can only take 7 newtons in any member. You want to determine the magnitudes of F1 and F2, what you have to realize is what you're going to do is sketch that and take the resultant through, show the tension this way and the tension that way and you're going to have to realize then in fact for these to be even in the x direction this one here is going to be the one that's going to be more so this is the one that's going to be your limiting factor and what you then have is something here you know that you're going to start at zero go up at seven right your reaction force has got to be that way, and then you're going to come back this way. And so that's how you know that this is 7, and then you have basically a 25, right? And so that's a kind of a logic question as you start looking at these through a sketch. So you're going to then know that, of course, you know that the cosine of 25 equals adjacent over hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is 7 because you can see that these somehow are going to be you need to kind of all up to 0 and so you know that adjacent right in other words this one here the horizontal force is equal to cosine of 25 times in this case 7 kilonewtons. Alright, so these you want to look at. The sketch sometimes gets you to the point where you solve the problem. So think about that before you delve wholeheartedly into any problem by sketching around and thinking, well, let's see, there's definitely one up 
this one is going to be over and this way. Well, that can't be. So what you're going to see in all reality is you're going to have something that way and then something that way and then something back up. This one being the reaction force, this one being the, the inclined member, and this one being the horizontal member. All right, that's through problem 2.12. I'm going to stop and print this one out, send it out. If you have not done the problems, please come see me. There's plenty of time to learn how to add vectors many, many different ways.